in continuation of our spotlight on God's generals that came out of Africa. Today we focus on a rare man of prayers who prayed for days, wrought amazing miracles, had angelic visitors, and introduced millions to the way of truth. We have looked at Simeon Toko. We also have seen Simon Kibango. And now we look at Joseph Ayo Babalola. He was a man of great calling. Joseph Hayodele Babalola was born on April 25, 1904 to David Rotimi and Madam Mata Talabi who belonged to the American church. The family lived at Odoawa in Ilofa, a small town about 90 kilometers from the Lauren in Kwara State, Nigeria. His father was a Baba Ijo church father of the CMS church at Odoawa. Pastor Medanishi wrote in his book, Iton, Ibedi De Woli Ayo Babalola, that mysterious circumstances surrounded the birth of Babalola. On that day it was believed that a strange and mighty object exploded and shook the cloud. Just like the Old Testament prophets, Babalola was called by God into the prophetic office to stand before men. This was a specific and personal call. Abalala's strange experience started on the night of September 25, 1928, when he suddenly became restless and could not sleep. This went on for a week, and he had no inkling the causes of such a strange experience. The climax came one day when he was, as usual, walking on the Elisha Ibaraoke Road. Suddenly, the stream roller's engine stopped to his utter amazement. There was no visible mechanical problem. And Joseph became confused and perplexed. He was in this state of confusion when a great voice, like the sound of many waters, called him three times. The voice was loud and clear, and it told him that he would die if he refused to heed the divine call to go into the world and preach. But Balala did not want to listen to this voice, and he responded like many of the biblical prophets, who, when they were called out by Yahweh as prophets, did not normally yield to the first call. Men like Moses and Jeremiah submitted to God only when it became inevitable. So Babalola gave in only after he had received the assurance of divine guidance. To go on the mission, he had to resign his appointment with the Public Works Department. Mr. Ferguson, the head of his unit, tried to dissuade him from his resigning but the young man was bent on going on the Lord's mission. The same voice came to Joseph a second time, asking him to fast for seven days. He obeyed, and at the end of the period, he saw a great figure of a man who, according to Pastor Alokan, resembled Jesus. The man in a dazzling robe spoke at length about the mission he was to embark upon. The man also told him of the persecutions he would face, and at the same time assured him of God's protection and victory. A hand prayer bell was given to Babalola as a symbol. He was told that the sound of the bell would always drive away evil spirits. He was also given a bottle of life-giving water to heal all manners of sickness. Consequently, wherever and whenever he prayed into water for therapeutic purposes, effective healing was procured for those who drank the water. Thus, Babalola became a prophet and a man with extraordinary powers. Enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit, he could spend several weeks in prayer. Elder Abraham Oyemi of Odoa said that the prophet regularly saw angels who delivered divine messages to him. An angel appeared in one of his prayers and forbade him to wear caps. During one of his prayer sessions, an angel appeared to him and gave him a big yam which he ordered him to eat. The angel told him that the yam was the tuber with which God fed the whole world. 
the Father revealed that God had granted unto him the power to deliver those who were possessed of evil spirits in the world. He was directed to go first to Odoawa and start preaching. He was to arrive in the town on a market day, cover his body with palm fronts, and disfigure himself with charcoal paints. In October 20, 1928, he entered the town in the manner described and was taken for a man. Babalala immediately started preaching and prophesying. He told the inhabitants of the Ofodoa about an impending danger if they did not repent. He was arrested and taken to the district officer at Lauren for allegedly disturbing the peace. The district officer later released him when the allegations could not be proven. However, it was said that a few days later, there was an outbreak of smallpox in the town. The man whose prophecies and messages were once rejected was quickly sought for. He went around praying for the victims, and they were all ill. There was a controversy among the leaders of the faith of in Nigeria over some doctors. Issues like the use of Western and traditional drugs, versus divine healing, polygamy, and whether polygamous husbands should be allowed to partake of the Lord's Supper were among those doctrines that needed to be agreed on. These issues had caused dissension at the Elisha Tabernacle and in order to avoid a split, the delegation of peacemakers made up of all living faith Tabernacle pastors was sent to Elisha. It was said by Pastor J.B. Esesade of Ijabode, President of the General Headquarters of the Movement and Dio Dubanjo of the Lagos Missionary Headquarters. The Elisha meeting was scheduled for 9th and 10th of July, 1930. The Apostolic Council of Jerusalem in AD 48 and other important church councils are precedents in seeking ecclesiastical direction on matters affecting the life and peace of the church. The representatives began their meeting and on the agenda were 24 items. The first was the validity of baptism administered to a man with many wives. The second was the issue of divine healing because some of the members believed in the use of drugs like quinine to cure malaria fever. They were only able to discuss the first item when there was a sudden interruption which Pastor Adebuega described to us. The conciliatory talks at Elysia were going on when suddenly a mighty sweeping revival broke out at Faith Tabernacle Congregation Church at Oke Oye, Elysia. The revival began with the raising by Babalola of a dead child. The mother of the child, who was restored to life, went about spreading the news around the town of Elisha, proclaiming that the miracle working prophet had come to the town of Okioye. This attracted a large number of people to Okioye to see the prophet. According to Pastor Medaishi, many of those afflicted with various diseases who came to Okioye were healed. Many mighty works were performed through the use of the prayer bed and the drinking of consecrated water from a stream called Umiayo, Stream of Joy. The result was that thousands of people, including traditional religionists, Muslims and Christians, from various other denominations were converted to the faith of Anako. As there was no space in the church hall, revival meetings were shifted to an open field where men and women from all walks of life, from every part of the country and from neighboring countries, assembled daily for healing, deliverances, and blessings. It was testified that within three weeks, Babalola had killed about 100 lepers, 60 blind people, and 50 lame persons. It was further claimed that both the Anglican and Wesleyan churches in Elisha were left desolate because their members transferred their allegiance to the revivalists and that all the patients in Wesley Hospital in Elisha abandoned their beds to seek aid from Babalala. Also, many of the schools belonging to the Wesleyan and Anglican churches, as well as the Baptists and the Roman Catholics, closed down altogether and there has not been sufficient money again to pay their teachers due to the fact that the majority of their members left to join us, says the witness. It was also revealed that hopeless barren women were made fruitful. Women who had been carrying their pregnancies for long years were wonderfully delivered. 
The dumb spoke and lunatics were killed. In fact, it was another day of Pentecost. Witches confessed and some demon possessed people were exercised. A revelation was later given to Babalola to burn down a big tree in front of the Owa's palace. The Owa was a paramount king of the people. The big tree was traditionally believed to be the rendezvous of witches and wizards. The juju tree was therefore greatly feared, and sacrifices were usually made to the spirits believed to reside in it. There was apprehension that this bold act would result in instantaneous death of Babalala since it was expected to arouse the anger of the gods. But to the great amazement of the people, the prophet did not die but rather continued to work stronger in the Lord's work. That single event was said to have made even the hour of Elisha and important people in the town to fear and respect the prophet. One Mr. Sipran E. Ufon came from Creek Town in Calabar to entreat Babalala to come over to Macedonia and help. Ufon had heard about Babalala and his work and wanted him to preach in Creek Town. After seeking God's direction, the prophet followed Ufon to Creek Town. His campaign there was very successful. From Creek Town, Babalala visited Deep Town in a plantation where a national church existed at the time. Certain members of this church received the gift of the Holy Spirit as Babalala was preaching to them and were baptized. When the prophet returned from the Calabar area, he settled down for a while. In 1935, he married Dukas. The CNC believes that the spiritual power bestowed on Babalala placed him on an equal level with the club apostles like Peter Paul and others who were sent out with authority in the name of Jesus. Joseph Ayo Abalala slept in the Lord in 1959.